Hi there, so when you first turn on your machine, you'll have seen the little message reminding you to do a warm up before your workout, but you might not be too sure what warm up to do, depending on what the workout you have planned is. Now, today's warm up is all about max intensity, like time trials. It's a 20 minute long warm up, which to be fair is a workout in itself, but what it's designed to do is get your body right up there, purring, ready to go, so you don't have to spend the first 30 seconds to a minute getting your body ready and therefore losing time in your main session, okay? Now, like the 10 minute warm up, what we're gonna do is gradually increase and then decrease our intensity as we go through it. And of course, I will guide you the whole way through it so you just have to follow me, all right? So we have to get our machine set up, which means really setting your resistance to where you want it to be. Now, what I'd say is don't set it too low. If you feel like you're rowing through air, you're not gonna be getting warmed up enough. If you set it too high though, you're just gonna tire yourself out before your main session heads. So you wanna find somewhere in between where you get a nice connection, but you don't feel like you're actually tiring yourself. It's kind of, take a few sessions, like a few attempts at this maybe, just to find that sweet spot for you. A good example is that when I'm doing a 30 minute, 20 strokes a minute, row, I will set it to 10, but on uh, this warm up, I'm gonna set my resistance to six, okay? So it's gonna be a little bit less, um, but there is an option to increase it at one point if you wish, but I'll remind you of that when we get there. If you're using the Averon app for Concept2, then I recommend setting your drag factor to wherever it is that you normally set it. Now, if you don't know about drag factor, I suggest setting the lever to five to start, and then read up about drag factor afterwards. After all, too low isn't the problem in the Concept2, too high is when it becomes a problem because your technique starts to fall apart as you grab against the weight of the flywheel. Next up, you have to set your foot stretcher height. And what I suggest is to get to a point where you can put the strap over the bottom lace of your shoe. That should be round about the right height and you can adjust from there. This gives you the right amount of flexibility as you come into the front. So we're gonna start this warm up at 20 strokes a minute and the intensity, I want it to be just as though you're standing up from a squat, not holding any weights, just standing up. Just get your body moving, get the machine moving and we will worry about increasing intensity as we go, all right? You ready to start? I hope so. Here we go in three, two, one, let's begin. So really this first minute or so is just about getting your body moving, just about opening up your hips and reminding your body that hey, we're gonna be doing some exercise today. Maybe you've been sitting at a desk all day and you kind of really need to prime your body ready for what's ahead. So let's give it a chance and warm up, not hit the ground running up, okay? And so what you need to think about is your hip rock. So rock your body over your hips towards the front of the machine into round about that one o'clock position. And then at the back of the machine, to around about 11 o'clock and just concentrate on rocking forwards, rocking backwards. Let those hip, hips pump. Hips? What's a hip? <laughs> Let those hips pump. <laughs> That's a nice combination of words. And as we come into the end of this first minute, just increase that push from your legs a tiny bit, okay? Maybe just one or two seconds faster. We're still, remember, this is a 20 minute warm up. So you're not looking to go too fast too soon and tire yourself out. So look, just follow my directions, increase gradually. We're gonna spend the first three minutes just increasing gradually through this stroke rate, making sure that our body is moving through the right positions before we think about doing anything else, okay? So hopefully, that hip rock is starting to feel a little bit looser and you can think about the rest of your body. So move to your arms, just concentrate on them being nice and straight at the front of the stroke. So as you come forwards, straight, hold the position and only pull in at the back of the stroke. Let's do another minute at this pace. Continue to think about rocking over your hips Rocking forwards, arms straight, and then rock backwards and pull in with the arms. And then for your slide on the seat, you can start to think about how far forwards you're sliding. You wanna come forwards. If you can get your shins vertical without your feet 
or your heels coming too far off the foot plates, then that's ideal. But just keep it nice and smooth and try not to go past that vertical position with your shins, okay? That's the important part. Okay, so two more strokes. I want you to just add another two seconds to your pace to go a little bit faster still. Hold your 20 strokes a minute, but just push a little harder with the legs. And this is how you control pace when it comes to rowing. It's not about pulling the handle, it's about pushing harder with your legs. And this is why I talk about these body positions of arms straight, shins vertical, forwards rock, is to make sure that as you push your legs into the machine, that power comes up through your body and into your arms and into the handle. And that way, your pace and intensity is controlled by your legs, not by pulling your arms. Okay, two more strokes. And then see if you can increase just one second more, maybe two, but hold this stroke rate. So really, you should be searching for an intensity where you can feel your heart rate is starting to climb, your breathing rate is starting to climb, and where in previous warm-ups, I've said that a good guide is that you can talk or sing while you're rowing. Maybe you're just getting to the point where your breathing is a little bit labored, so you have to take a couple of pauses and you can't speak or sing the whole way. So it's kind of warm up plus <laughs> pace right here. And this is just adding a little bit of intensity to the warm up, but by holding the 20 strokes a minute pace, or stroke pace, sorry, it means you're kind of, you're thinking more about power from the legs rather than flying up and down the rail, which makes the warm up just that little bit more effective. Then, ooh, after another 30 seconds at this pace, we're gonna ease off by a few seconds. And really what you're gonna search for at that point is an intensity where you're able to get back to talking or singing. Hopefully you're in the comfort of your own home if you're singing. <laughs> okay. So take two more paces. No, sorry, two more strokes. What's he saying? <laughs> okay, so let's reduce that pace just by, say about four seconds again. And what really you're searching for here is that connection of the legs to the arms. And you can feel the weight of the stroke. So you're still rowing a little bit faster than you were when we first started this warm up, remember when I said it was just about like standing up from a squat, you're rowing a bit faster than that, but you're not rowing as fast as you were 40 seconds ago. <laughs> and this gives your heart rate and your breathing rate a chance to recover. After all, the most important thing with this warm up is that even though we're going to gradually increase intensity, the most important thing is that you finish it energized. We're gonna do another minute of this. Energized and ready for your time trial or your max intensity session. If you feel tired by this, then you're going a little bit too fast for these slow recovery points. This is the warm up that I use before I do a 2K race. And trust me, it does feel like quite a lot to row for 20 minutes and to cover around about 5,000 meters before rowing 2K. But it does mean 
that when I sit down on the machine to start, my body's ready for it. I'm not surprised by heart rate or breathing rate or anything. My body's primed and ready. Okay, so in three more strokes time, I want you to push a little harder with the legs to get a faster drive speed to go up to 22 strokes a minute. You ready? So a little bit harder of a push sends you to the back of the machine a little bit quicker. So whereas before we were controlling the 20 strokes a minute with the more power, now we're letting it speed up our drive speed and therefore our stroke rate. Take one more here. And now I want you to go back down to that easy 20 strokes a minute pace we were just rowing at. And this is what we're gonna spend our time doing over the next few minutes. Gradually increasing pace, but then backing right off to this gentle 20 strokes a minute pace again. And this will stop you from getting too tired ahead of your main session. One more here. Let's go up to 24 strokes a minute. So for this one, if you want, you can just count up using the timer. So you make sure and hit the 10 second mark, and then you make sure to hit the 15 second mark, and then the two and a half and seven and a half in between will take care of themselves. It's a great way to kind of hack the rhythm into your body is to use the counter, the timer. Last one here, back to 20 strokes a minute. I really do, I know it seems complicated, but it isn't really, it's only 30 se second chunks. But I want you to let me tell you what to do while you concentrate on that hip rock, forwards and backwards, on keeping those arms straight at the front and only pulling in at the back. One more stroke here. Okay, let's go up to 26 strokes a minute. Push harder still with the legs. Slightly faster drive speed. You'll probably have to couple that with a slightly faster recovery now. And you use the handle to guide you through that. So let the handle come straight away from your chest. Don't hold it against your body and that will help you recover quicker. Okay, down to 20 strokes a minute. And that nice, easy pace. So your stroke rate is controlled by your drive speed and also your recovery speed. Usually, the recovery takes longer than the drive, okay? So you drive quick, recover slow. One more here. And let's take it up to 28 strokes a minute. So this is where some people start to feel a little more uncomfortable with the higher rates. But usually that's because they're not fluid with the stroke. Maybe you're pausing at the back or swinging the arms up and down. One more here. So not only do you let the handle come straight back out. Remember we're back at that 20 strokes a minute again. You let the handle come straight back out, send it forwards in a straight line. Just forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. There's no need to drop it low. And there's certainly no need to rise it high. <laughs> One more here. Let's take it to 30 strokes a minute. You ready? So this is another one where you can just look at the timer. One stroke every two seconds. Let that handle come away from your body at the same speed you pulled it in at. So it's still fluid and controlled, but it's starting to get quicker. One more here. Because you don't want, it, you're not scared of the handle. 
you don't get to the back of the stroke and then go oh, and throw it away from you. Remember, you're still down at that 20 strokes a minute. Right, so we're gonna go up to 32 next. This is as high as we'll go. Okay, so don't worry, we're not gonna keep going. So one more stroke. Here we go then. So really, get that drive nice and quick. Handle comes away smoothly, but quickly. Try to think about rocking forwards and backwards. All of this comes together to help you with your quicker stroke rate. Trust me. Okay, one more after this. Here we go, one more. And then back down to 20 strokes a minute. And that gentle pace. So what we're gonna do is we'll finish off this 30 seconds. Then we're gonna do another two minutes rowing at this pace, just to make sure any kind of real rise that may have happened to your heart rate there just gets a chance to back off a bit. Your body will now be primed in terms of power and stroke rate should be ready for what you have ahead but what you want to do now is give it a chance to recharge okay to make sure that that kind of free energy that you get in your muscles at the start of a time trial has all recharged so you get free energy called ATP which kind of gives you instant power for maybe the first five to 10 strokes, depending on your own physiology, before your body then starts to kind of search for proper fuel from your body and your glycogen stores and things. And so by spending the first 14 minutes building up, warming up, we will have prepared our body, but we will also have drained some of that ATP. So that's what the last six minutes of this warm up is geared towards, is flushing the muscles. And then when you couple it with at least two minutes rest between this warm up and your main session, you'll then have recharged your body ready for your time trial. Ideally, you wanna wait Around about five minutes in between, but it should be okay to just wait two, okay? So, we're gonna move into drills next. So I want you to take one foot out of the strap, put it on the ground, continue rowing with that one foot still strapped in. And this will help the mobility side of your body. You get that forwards tilt into the front a little bit easier because you've only got one leg strapped in. You still think about pushing out from the front and the arms nice and straight. Let's swap feet. Don't worry if it takes you five seconds or so to swap over feet. If you can spend like 15 to 20 seconds per leg doing this, that's enough. Okay. So just carry on pushing out, keep those arms straight. Basically your technique should still be the same here. Just, you've only got one leg strapped in. <laughs> Let's take one more, put the other foot back in, tighten the strap, legs nice and straight, and then roll with your back and your arms. So that means swinging with your back first in order to pick up that, like pick up the tension, connect with your back swing first and then you pull in with your arms. Then you release your arms and rock back over your hips again. This is a fantastic drill to help with your sequencing. Let's do one more here. Then we're gonna roll into the front, arms straight, forwards tilt, 
and just press out with your legs while holding your arms straight and that forward tilt, okay? And what you're doing here is working on the timing. You want your feet to push into the foot plates at the same time your hands connect the handle to the machine. But you're also working on getting used to holding this forward tilt and arm straight as you push with your legs. Let's take one more here. Then we're gonna go back into 20 strokes a minute. And if you want to just increase your resistance by one or two uh, clicks, whatever you wanna call them, points here, you can. So even if you have to quickly stop and press a button, if that to happen if you don't have the buttons on your handle, and that's fine. These last two minutes are really just like a final primer, just to remind your body what it feels like to go through the full rowing stroke, the full motion, so that as you start your time trial or your max intensity row, your brain's last memory of how to row from a technique point of view is as good as you can manage. So really think about arms away, rock forwards, tilting in towards the front of the machine, push with your legs to start the stroke, holding your arms straight, and then keep that forwards tilt, only swing your back when you're about halfway through the leg drive, and then pull in the handle at the back of the stroke before instantly releasing it away from your body and starting that whole sequence again. Always trying to keep a good posture up on your sit bones rather than slumped with your tailbone tucked underneath you. Hips should point rock forwards at the front of the stroke, not backwards. Okay, let's take two more here. Last one, finish with a flourish. And that is the 20 minute warm up finished. Now, if you have a time trial ahead of you, I wish you all the best, good luck with it. Um, and if you just have a really tough session ahead, make sure and uh, keep strong, make sure it's all about the brain, keep pushing, be sensible. But no matter what, between now and whatever you're about to do, have a drink, <laughs> make sure and enjoy your row. I'll see you in a future video, goodbye.